Hello and welcome back to another video. I'm back with another PC troubleshooting build and I've got Declan back again from Region. So it's my turn this time to troubleshoot a faulty PC. Declan's brought this PC along that's not working, so let's take a closer look at it. Okay Declan, do you want to run us through the specs you've got in this system then? Yeah, for the processor we have an i5-10400, uh, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. Uh, the motherboard is Gigabyte B560 HD3. Uh, the cooler is a Noctura NHD15. Yep. Uh, the power supply we have a Corsair 500 watt Sami modular. And for the graphics card we have a Red Devil 5700 XT. Okay, so definitely this uh, massive air cooler is going to make the troubleshooting a little bit more difficult. Um, and what's the problem with this PC then? Uh, we're getting power to the system, but she's failing to post. Okay. So I suppose the first thing I want to do is actually power things on and see that uh, myself. Okay, so we'll go ahead and power the PC on. And straight away that's good. We've got lights on the RAM, fans are spinning, and graphics card is lighting up. But as we can see, there's no post on the monitor. So first thing I want to do is take a wee look at the PC and see do we have any debug LEDs that are lighting up. So I don't see any, so I'm going to have to take a look at the motherboard manual. Have a look in the manual and this motherboard doesn't actually have any debug LEDs, so that's not going to help me. Um, it is possible to plug a speaker into the speaker header and there's going to be a series of beeps potentially which may point me towards the problem. But the first thing I want to do is just have a check of all the cables and make sure everything looks like it is plugged in where it should be. So we'll power things off. Okay, so I'm just going to check the cables. So, a bit of flex in that motherboard. So you'll notice just as I'm pushing on this 24 pin cable, there's an awful lot of flex in that motherboard. It does look like it's maybe missing a screw, but if you look here, there's no actual screw hole up the top here. Um, there's one here, but it doesn't seem to be lining up great with the standoffs. But that shouldn't cause it not to post. But the 24 pin cable looks like it's plugged in well. And Declan's not made it easy for me with this beast of an air cooler. And I don't think the top of this PC comes off either. Really checking this EPS cable is going to be quite difficult. And again, there's going to be no way for me to get a hand in here. W what I'm noticing is there is a fan at the top here. And really, before we go any further, I would like to make sure that EPS cable is plugged in. So I'm just going to remove this top fan. And it does look like it's fully pushed into the motherboard. Looking at the GPU, though, not the problem. It does look like it's quite a bit of sag on it. So you could definitely do with a GPU support bracket. And we've got our PCIe cables, so it looks like we've got one cable running to it, and they are daisy chained, but they are looked to be plugged in well. So we've got the two fans for the NHD15, they're plugged into the CPU fan and CPU ops header, they look correctly plugged in. We've got our USB 3.0 cable, it looks to be fully plugged in. And then we head down to the bottom of the motherboard, we've got our HD audio cable, this must be our rear fan cable. And we've got our front panel connectors and again they all look plugged in appropriately. So the major thing I can't see at the moment is the RAM. It's hiding behind the NHD15. Uh, I'm probably going to have to pull the front fan out to take a look at it. And actually that fan has come partially loose. To be honest while we're troubleshooting the easiest thing is just to leave one fan plugged into the CPU cooler. So we've got a fan here. But just looking at this fan again, it's not properly installed on the, the cooler. It is loose. See these wee clips at the top? They're meant to be over the cooler, holding it in place. Again, not a reason the PC is not working, but it would need pulled and held into place to prevent it moving about. So in terms of the RAM, we've got one stick of RAM. It is in the second slot. I'm just going to check it's seated correctly. Or actually, no, we've got two sticks of RAM. Didn't see that smaller one hiding behind us. And they're RAM from completely different kits. So we've got one in slot one and one in slot number two, which is not the way it should be. And there shouldn't be kits of different sets of RAM. So we'll just take this one out. There's clips in the top and the bottom of this motherboard. So taking a look at the RAM, the RAM itself looks good. And the slots in the motherboard look fine. So all I'm going to do is take one stick of RAM and we'll pop it into the second slot. So I'm going to go with this HyperX one, it's the smaller one, so easier to fit in.
And I think at the moment I'm reasonably happy with the front of the PC. So we'll go ahead and try powering on again. So you can see there is RGB on the RAM, but we're still not getting a post. So we can take a look at the back of the PC. You can see our bank plate. We've got a SATA SSD. I can see we've got a SATA power cable, but we've got no SATA data cable plugged in. And I didn't notice a SATA data cable at the front either. But again, that's, that's not gonna stop our PC posting. It might stop the PC booting if there's no boot drive, but it won't stop it posting. And actually, I'm just gonna unplug all these cables. And see what we've got. So we've got front panel connectors. We do have a type C cable. Um, it's not plugged in. I don't think this motherboard has a type C header. No. No, so that's fine to leave that unplugged. SATA power cable and all the other cables look to be appropriate. Now the only other thing that I'm going to have to do is take a wee look at the connectors at the back of the power supply. Not that easy to see in here to make sure they're all plugged in the right place. I'm just going to pull the power supply out very quickly. But as Declan's mentioned, this is a semi-modular power supply. So the essential cables are already plugged in and then you plug in the additional cables that you're going to need. So we've got our 24 pin cable here and we've got our EPS cable running up here and they're obviously plugged in, they can't be interfered with. The other cables that we've got, we've got our GPU PCIe cable, and then we've got two SATA power cables, so there's one here and one here. And one of these is plugged into our SSD, which doesn't have a data cable, and the other one is a spare, and it's a good place to leave your cables rather than leaving them in the box. If you don't need them and you have plenty of space at the bottom of the PC, no harm in having them plugged in. So there's nothing obvious that I'm finding here. The only thing I'm not completely happy with is I haven't been able to definitely check that top EPS cable um, because of the cutter in the way. That's it. So I'm obviously missing something. Oh, has it been opened? Yeah, so it does look like the power supply has actually been opened. It's loose. So somebody may well have actually taken this apart. So the power supply definitely is a worry. What I did want to do at this stage was actually see what faults I'm getting and plug the speaker in, I think is the next thing I want to do. So I'll just leave that sitting out for now. So not something I've ever had to do with the motherboard, but if you don't have the debug LEDs, there is these little speakers and they were fairly common um, in previous generations of motherboards. Most of them now have the postcode status LEDs and some of them actually have the little screen that you can check and see what the problem is. So the idea is when we plug this in, it's going to emit a series of beeps letting us know if there's a fault with the PC. We'll go ahead and plug the speaker cable in. I'm going to try and power the PC on again and see if it gives us any beeps to help tell us what's wrong with the PC. So I'm not getting any noise at all from that speaker. Um, it is meant to emit beeps when it posts correctly and also make beeps if there's errors. So for some reason it may not be getting power. So I think given the fact that the power supply has been opened, um, it's one thing I would like to rule out quite quickly and it probably is worth just testing the power supply. Okay, so I've gone ahead and get the power supply plugged into my thermal take tester. So 24 pin cable, we've got our EPS cable, we plugged one of our 8-pin PCIe cables and I've also plugged in one of the SATA cables at the top and we can press the power on. Oh, so we've got a fail here already. Power supply is spinning. But we're getting a fail in the power good value. And we press the button again. The 12 volt looks good, PCIe looks good, SATA looks okay, but it's just testing our 24 pin and the power good value has a fail on it. So as far as that's telling me, I think we've got a dodgy power supply. Uh, beyond my expertise to fix, but that's certainly a reason why our PC might not be powering on, particularly if it is the 24 pin that's given us problems. 
Okay, so a nice new power supply installed. Let's flip the power switch and see what happens. So we definitely this time got a change in the fans and we've got a post on the monitor. And we got a single beep actually from that speaker, which was good to see. Yeah, so we've, we've got the PC up and working with a simple change in the power supply. So out of interest, I just wanted to test what the speaker would do if you do have a fault. You've seen the solid beep it gives you when the PC posts. Let's see what happens if there's a fault. And I've actually just removed all the RAM from the system and we'll power the PC on. And it will power on without any RAM in it. And we're just listening and see what it does. So if you actually look up what this fault means, it means your memory isn't installed correctly. And it's certainly the case because we don't have any in. So this is the old version of those debug LEDs you get, definitely. It's nice to have the debug LEDs rather than these continuous beeps, but it just shows you how the PC will behave and point out the faults to you, even if you don't have those LEDs. Okay, so we've been able to get the PC to post, which is great. Um, obviously there'd be settings we're gonna to have to do and one stick of RAM isn't ideal. Um, we don't have any boot drives. You look over at the SATA devices, there's no drives appearing. and that's because we don't have a SATA data cable. So I'm just going to turn the PC off again and plug that in. So again, we just got the one beep, which is our sign that our PC has posted, so it hasn't found any errors. And this time it looks like there must be a boot drive installed on that disk because it looks like it's going to boot into Windows. Yeah, it's getting devices ready. Yeah, and there we go. We're through to Windows now, so it was just missing a SATA data cable. Now, there is a few things I'm still not happy with this PC. Um, obviously, one stick of RAM isn't going to be great. We're not going to have dual channel. Um, so I would recommend getting a kit of two sticks of RAM rather than running just the one. And again, mixing and matching kits from two different... Uh, manufacturers probably isn't a great idea. So another PC saves. Had great fun actually doing that troubleshooting. It's nice to do it in this setting. It's really frustrating at the end of a long day building a PC when it doesn't work. But hopefully these videos will help you. If you are running into bother with your PC, um, they'll give you some advice and tips on how you can troubleshoot the problems and give you an idea of the different faults and how they will present. Um, if you are struggling to do it yourself, there is people like Declan who will do it for you. Um, I'll put links to his website in the description so you can check him out if you are having bothered with your PC He could take a look at it for you. Certainly if you're in the Northern Ireland area. Thanks guys. Hi, no worries um, If you have enjoyed this troubleshooting, I'm, I've been a little bit bored of doing the step-by-step -step PC build guide So I'm taking a wee bit of a break from them at the moment and doing something different actually just gives you that enjoyment back again So I might do a few more of these if you have enjoyed them Let me know in the comments if you'd rather have got back with the step-by-step -step PC build guides let me know that as well. If you have enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not currently subscribed, hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.